Good morning. Um, my name is Holger Levsen. I will talk about reproducible builds ecosystem today. Um, yeah. Maybe I will talk. So, the slides are not really fully there. I'm not debugging this now. Um, I did a lot of things in Debian. Um, organized StepConf, got involved in Debian QA. Um, there's some things I used to do, like I used to do DebConf Organizer, Debian Edu, and Debian LTS. I'm not doing those anymore, but I'm still very much interested to talk about that. If you have questions, ask me anytime. Um, this talk will talk a lot about these names. So we started having this Jenkins instance, then made it a reproducible Debian net, and now turned it into reproducible builds org. They're all on the same system. It's all the same. Um, and sometimes it's only RB org on the slides because else it didn't fit. Um, so I became involved with reproducible builds in the end of 2014. Um, since May 2015, Luna and me are sponsored, sponsored by the Linux Foundation to work on this. Um, but there's many more people in the team working on it. I'm mostly working on this testing framework. Um, I'm not really working on other things because this testing framework, as you will see, is quite big, so I'm quite busy with that part. And one other thing which I would like to say, some people say using Tor is diff difficult. Really using Tor is really super easy. Up get install Tor browser launcher and you have a Tor browser configured with Tor and you serve anonymously on the net. In case you didn't know, not you know. So anyway, as I said, I'm just one of these people. This is the Debian Reproducible Builds team, and this is just me. And there's many more people working on it. Um, and equally, this Jenkins setup, these are all the contributors to the Jenkins stuff. And these are the contributors who contributed code to the Jenkins Debian net thing, which did not non-Debian related commits. So I'm also there because I did some stuff on all the other things. Hans Christoph does stuff on F-Droid, and I will explain what people are working on. So this is, it started as Debian, but has become cross-distro project. So <clears throat> as I like to know a bit about you, who of you contributes to free software? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> who has seen a talk about reproducible builds last year? Okay, that's quite quite many. And who has contributed to reproducible builds? Yay. Also quite many, like good. Um, so I'll briefly explain the motivation for those who haven't seen talks, but mostly is watch this talk, not from the from the last but one congress. Um, which explains very well the motivation, what's, what is the problem we are trying to solve. Um, so one example is there was one remote root exploit in SSHD, and there was only the difference in the binary was a single bit. The error was, um, the code was greater than and had to be greater equal than, and the difference in the binary is one bit in a 500 kilobyte binary. So one bit can have a huge impact. And they also had a live demo with a kernel module which modified the source in memory but not on disk. So if you look at the code, the code looks fine. If you compile the code, you will get a backdoor compiled into it. It was just a proof of concept, but that's possible. And they also nicely showed how much financial incentives there are to break developer machines. Um, if you can... Um, have an exploit in one machine and that gets distributed in millions of codes and you can get whatever people's financial data, you can get private data and it's um, to circumvent censorship countries have hundreds of millions of budget so there's really lots of money to crack one machine and it could be a developer machine or it could be the build demons of a software project like Debian or Fedora or whatever and attacker with which have 50 million dollars that can buy zero days and do whatnot. 
And you probably also leave, <coughs> you don't really know what's running when you leave your machine all the time on the net. And you also usually leave your computers alone. Other people have physical access to it. And can USB 3 has direct memory um, access. So if you leave your computers alone, your computers are in danger. And everybody does that, I guess. And another one, last example is there was a, from the Snowden documents, the CIA talked about uh, embedding, um, modifying SDKs. In this case, it was for iOS, but there's also other things. Um, and they discussed how they can put a, um, a backdoor into the SDK. So when developers use the SDK to build applications, the, there's a backdoor in all the applications. And while this was theoretically in the Snowden documents, last year there was this Xcode ghost vulnerability, which is an iOS backdoor which was found in the wild. Um, WeChat was the most popular application with mil tens of millions of users having this backdoor. And the source code was fine. It was just the SDK which was backdoored. Um, so our solution to that is that we rebuilt the sources. Everybody should be able to rebuild sources and get the exact same binary, bit by bit, identically. And we call this reproducible builds. And I have a little demo. So, yeah, it's fine. So this builds the Debian package five times. It takes 20 seconds or something. And the result you'll see is unreproducible. It's a different checksum all the time. So there you see on the left the checksums, and they are all different. Yeah, they're all different. And now I switch into my reproducible seed root. Do the same. And they should be all identical. <laughs> La -da -da -da. Will that be the case? <coughs> Yay. These sex sums are all the same. And we think this should become the norm. And we also think we want to change the ma we want to change the meaning of free software, that it's only free software when it's reproducible. If it's not reproducible, it's software, yeah. So um, we have developed some, while we started with Debian, we by now have some common resources. So we now have this web page, reproducible-builds.org, where we explain the concept. We have documentation how to address common issues. Um, <coughs> then Luna gave a talk at the CCC camp last year um, where he explained many issues in detail, the com what, what they are, how to fix them. Um, the talk is available also on CCC video. That if you either read the documentation on, our, on the web page or watch the talk, they explain how to um, fix the issues we have identified. They're mostly the same common problems. And the most common problem is timestamps. Timestamps get embedded by everything. Most, it's not so much the, the binaries, but it's often documentation. And as we want the whole package to be identically, a timestamp in the documentation is equally annoying. And basically, all the documentation tools embed the build timestamp there. And these things need to be fixed. Then another source for variation is time zones. Um, time zones and locales. So if you, for example, um, if you unpack a tar archive from 1980 or whenever, you unpack it, to, unpack it today, your local time zone will be applied. 
And so the files from 1980 get modified by your local time zone. So if you, if you build with a different time zone than the original build, you get different results. And this, these two issues, time zones and locales, can be addressed by normalizing the build environment. Some projects do that. In Debian, we don't do that. So, um, so we want to fix these in, in, in Debian, we want to fix this in the upstream sources because we don't want to be, have it fixed in Debian, but there's other tools we just built without normalizing the build environment, so we try to fix it upstream. Locales are also important because they, for example, sorting is affected by the locale. So French is sorted differently than German, and that gets into your binaries. And then there's other issues. Um, we have we have identified quite many, but there's also some which we haven't identified where we don't know what these are. But to give you some numbers, that's out of 20,000 packages, it's like 300 packages in this category. So it's really small rest. They're probably hard, but the majority of things are timestamps, time zones, and locales. And this is all explained in the web page and in Luna's talk. I will mostly not give more examples here. So, build and build day timestamps are usually not really useful for the user um, because it just says when is something was built. But if, this, if you can rebuild at any time and you get the same result, the build date becomes meaningless. What is important for the user is the last modification of the source code. And for developers, it's also interesting to know the environment which it was built. And just having the build date is an approximation of the environment, but it's not really describing the environment. So it's not really useful. So we came up with source state epoch, which is a variable. And this is defined as the last modification of the source. And this can be used as a build date, or as a date, because it's deterministic. The source will not get modified after build. And it can also be used for random seeds and other stuff. In Debian, we set it from Debian changelog entry. You can also set it from the last git commit or the last modification of the file. Um, it has adopted by NetBSD, FreeBSD, Arch Linux, GUIX are using it. And we also put it into other, oh yeah, we have, a, we have written a spec, which is like two pages document, very small, very technical, describing with shawl and must how this looks like. And We've um, sent, patched these tools already um, to respect source state epochs. So when they embed, used to embed, embed a build date, they now embed the source state epoch date um, and thus become deterministic. There's still some packages where we have patches pending. We also get it into GCC, thanks to Dole. Um, there's some more where we need to get it in but it's, the, the adoption is quite good. Um, so, and then on test, maybe I should try to get the slides. Oh. Yep. So this is better. So on test reproducible builds Debian org, we test Debian stable, testing, and uns experimental, unstable. And we also now test, start tested OpenWRT, NetBSD, FreeBSD, Arch Linux, Fedora, and soon F-Droid and GUIX, Geeks. Um, so there's 230 Jenkins job doing this. This is a Jenkins setup. Um, and it's 42 scripts, some Python, some Bash. The Python is usually um, used to generate the web pages, while the Bash scripts just um, build the software, basically. So it's, by now it's, again, 10 Bash scripts, because all the other distros are it's just one Bash script. It's really, really simple code. It's, it's also not much. Um, and 
I cannot maintain all these distros, so I happily take patches. So if you don't need a test set up to send me patches when you work on whatever, F-Droid or Fedora, just send me the patches. I will happily merge them. If whatever breaks, I don't care, because it's quite isolated. Um, I'll explain this in greater detail now. So what are we testing? Basically, we build a software twice and then compare it. And for the second build, we introduce variations. So we change the host name. We change the time zone. So the time zone difference is more than 24 hours. That made us find many um, issues already. We change the username. The kernel is changed. The UMAST is changed. Um, the CPU type is only changed on ARM at the moment, not yet on AMD64, though I think, hope it will be happening in a month or something. We don't test very the file system at the moment, though Andrew Ayer wrote DisorderFS. DisorderFS is a fuser file system where the read here returns the order of files in a random way. So that will um, find things which were the, and because there are file systems which return that in random ways, so not deterministic ways. So this will find things when you build on different file systems. Um, and on AMD64 also, we have two hosts running in the future. So now they run in February 2017. Um, and thus, we also find these variations. Um, and for the non-Debian test, we have a little bit, bit less variations at the moment, because it's sometimes not as easy, or I have to implement it differently, and it just didn't have time. But most variations are applied to all, everything. And sometimes the build environment does normalize these settings, sometimes not. And we want to find all these cases. And to find the differences, Luna started to write Diffoscope. Um, Diffoscope takes two objects and compares them. And it goes recursively into them. So if you give it to whatever, two RPMs, it will look into the RPM, find a PDF in the, P in the RPM, then look into the PDF, find a PNG in there, and will analyze this, and will display the differences like this side by side. So you can see on the left it's that, and on the right is the content there. Um, what <coughs> It falls back to binary comparison also, and it's been ava it's available. And we can build it from Git via PyPy. It's packaged for Debian, Arch Linux, Geeks Homebrew. It's been tested on BSD now. We want maintainers in more distributions. And if you want to try it, you can just go to trydiffoscope.org and give it two objects. And two objects can be two directories, two CD-ROMs, whatever. Give it two objects, Diffoscope will compare it. It's really, really cool. And Diffoscope is only used for debugging. Um, because for testing whether something is reproducible, we just want to compare the checksums, and that's it. We don't want to analyze the contents, because analyzing the contents is potentially error-prone and can be a risk. So for checking whether something is reproducible, Diffoscope is not used. Not sure whether you really want to use Diffoscope on a totally untrusted input. Comparing two builds is definitely fine, definitely, usually. Um, so the whole setup is running on uh, several machines in the cloud, sponsored by ProfitBricks. So we have more than 100 cores and 300 gigabyte RAM. Um, at the moment, the VMs are mostly testing Debian. You can see there's, what is that, 64, no, yeah, 64. I'm not going to do math now. I'm also tired. <laughs> um, so there's four times more resources for Debian than for the rest. Um, I'm happy to switch this over, because we are really fast in building Debian on AMD64. So I'm happy if the Fedora tests are used more, or the Fedora Arch Linux or other things where we have huge resources, I'm happy to switch resources away that we can build other things faster. Um, our ARM setup is more funny. It's 14 small nodes, Beagle boards, Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi, whatever, hosted by Vagrant. 
Together, they only draw 100 watts of power, which is really nice for 50 machines with 40 machines with SSDs. Um, but it also takes four weeks to build one Debian suit there. <laughs> and we are building two. So it takes eight weeks, while on AMD64 we build both testing and unstable in a week. So if we only build one of them, we build it in four days, while four weeks on ARM, but it's still we can build it and we find issues with it. It's just one side effect of us constantly rebuilding Debian. We also find many, many bugs very soon, as soon as they are uploaded because other people don't rebuild the whole archive all the time. So we, by now we also file lots of other QA bugs. Um, so Debian. So since yesterday, we reached 20,000 reproducible packages in Unstable in our current test framework, which is <laughs> So the, the orange graph is the unreproducible packages, and the red ones are failing to build from source. And the black ones are either not for AMD64, or the dependencies are not available, or other stuff. And the green ones are the reproducible ones, of course. Um, then we have nodes and issues. Um, so we have 179 categorized issues, like what I said, time zones in PyDoc, um, locale issue in this, and blah. And we have 3, 000, almost 3,700 nodes in 3,300 packages. But out of the unreproducible packages in SIT, only 139 don't have a node. So these are the ones where we could not really make anything out of it. Not all packages which have a node are completely uh, complete. So there might be just a node about one issue and the package has more issues. Um, but these are the ones which probably are more, either more difficult or just have been uploaded yesterday. Um, we maintain these nodes in Git. It's a simple YAML file, which then, once you commit to it, um, the Jenkins job picks it up, builds the nodes, updates the web pages, sends the IRC notification to our channel. Um, and at the moment, it's only Debian, but we want to have this also cross-distro. Because if a, if a node is the issue is in some package, it's likely also in the other distribution. I think this getting the nodes cross-distro will be take the summer or will take some time. And then you can go for any package, Debian package, you can go to reproducible.debian.net slash whatever, slash Linux, slash iSweasel, slash OpenSSL, and look at the package status. It takes source package names. And because Debian is way too big, with nobody cares about 23,000 packages, um, we have package sets, um, 29 of them. And there you can see the required is only 68% reproducible. So there's 10 packages which are unreproducible. We have patches for, I think, for eight out of the, out of the 10. Um, other package sets have better status. So the package sets we have is build essential. We have the all packages which had a security issue, all packages installed on Debian machines, the KDE package set, the GNOME package set. We have all Java packages, all OCaml packages. So we can look at your area of things and see, OK, this is the status there. If you have more package sets you think are interesting, I'm curious to hear. We have a Tails package set also, a Grimmel package set. Um, yeah. And this is the progress in the Debian bug tracker. The green bugs are the fixed bugs, and the orange one are the non-fixed ones. And as a rule, we usually file bugs with patches. I think 95% of our bugs at least have patches. So we filed more than 1,000 bugs with patches. And there's another graph with the um, packages failing to build from source, because we also now filed, I think, six or 700 bugs failing to build from source. When a package is updated, it doesn't build against old libraries, which are still there. And we see these bugs, so we also file them. <coughs> so I um, talked about some of this. For Debian, we agreed 
to always build in a fixed build path, because the C compiler and other compilers, Haskell and OCaml, they embed, embed the build path in the binary or in the objects they build. So for now, we agreed just to build in a static path. So it's slash build and then the package name and the source version. For GCC, we've now find a way to get rid of this. So for GCC, we could build in arbitrary passes. But for other compilers, we cannot do this yet, so we still do it. One thing, the build info files, I'll explain in a second. Strip non-determinism is another tool we wrote which removes non-deterministic stuff which can be safely dropped. One example is timestamps in PDF, uh, in, in, in images. I forgot what other things there are. We just apply it via that helper, so all packages which get built in Debian uh, use strip non-determinism. Probably that's a tool which is also useful for other distributions to use. Diffoscope I already explained. As, yeah, the rest I've explained already. Um, and then, since May last year, every, every single week, Luna has written a report about our efforts, um, which lists patches we wrote, packages which get fixed, development of the testing framework. Um, it's on Planet Debian, but you can also just, it's a blog, so you can just uh, subscribe to the RSS feed. Um, we had a summit in Greece in December with 40 people from 16 projects, and that's where we also renamed this test setup. We want, would like to have another summit in April or May, though it's get hard with planning, but we probably will do that. Um, if you're interested in collaborating, please talk to me. Really, if you want to attend the summit, come. And we also had two Google Summer of Code students in 2015. Um, they were totally new contributors to Debian, as far as I know, and they made really great contributions. So it's really, you can, it looks very complex, but you can um, start without, not, 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 without much knowledge. You just take one small package with this broken, analyze it, and that's where you start, and then you do more. Um, so, I've said there's already these build info files. If you want to be 100% sure that you can rebuild a package, one way is to recreate the exact same build environment. If it's a bit different, it might create the same results, so maybe it works. One way to be sure is just create the exact same environment. Um, and for Debian, we have solved this. I know that Koji is designed for that. I spoke with the Koji developer yesterday, and we still need to find a way to do that. It's designed for that, but it's not well documented how to do it in, to do it in Koji. GUIX can do it. Um, I also know OpenWRT records the environments, but I'm not sure where they are saving the results. Debian has the snapshot server, which is 20 terabytes, I think, which has all Debian packages ever uploaded since the year 2000 or something. So you can get any version there. Um, I'm not sure how other projects are preserving this. Um, we'll see. So we have these build info files in Debian, which are, if you build a package, there used to be a changes file and um, Debian binary packages. Now there's also a build info file. It has the checksums of the sources of the generated binaries and all the dependencies uh, used to build it. And this can be later used to create the exact same environment. We have a patch for sbuild. We need patches for pbuilder and other things. But we have one working version. And this is how a build info file looks. So it's simple RC822 format. It says the architecture, the source name, the build path is there, these checksums, and the build environment. This is the old slide. The build environment also now has checksums for the installed binaries, for the dependencies. And for Debian, to get what this 85% this in our testing framework, it's not in Debian SID now. So we have two blockers at the moment. And once these blockers are fixed, Debian will start to become reproducible for real, not in our testing framework. So it's dpackage. 
has some patches there, and which Guillaume now started to look at them and merge them. So I've, I'm quite optimistic that this will happen soon. And DUC, the Debian archive suits at the moment, accepts uploads with built info files but throws them away. That needs to be patched that these built info files are kept. And then we have parts of Debian reproducible. Uh, and we, in the end, we would also like, we want the policy to be changed that packages must be reproducible. Um, for a start, or we, we hope this will happen after stretch. So for stretch, reproducibility is still wish list and nice to have. But for Debian 10, we want this must thingy, which will be 2017 material. In 2016, we want policy to change that sources shall, shall be reproducible. Um, yeah, it is, as said, it's a proof of concept. We need these, three, these two patches to depackage and duck. There's some other patches we have. Like we have, at the moment, we have modified eight packages. So it's depackage, libxslt, cdbs, I don't know what, five other packages which are small things. Um, these are the main blockers. So I hope that Debian stretch will be partial, partially reproducible in a meaningful way. Hopefully build essential will be reproducible. I don't know what we'll get exactly. Um, and I hope we'll get this really soon, like in two, three months in the next or the ne next but one upload of dpackage, we'll get finally reproducible Debian, partly. Um, but even then, we are not there. There's how to rebuild, I'll come to that, how we handle these build info files and user tools needs some design still and code. It's mostly not written. And now to the non-Debian world. Um, all the errors are mine. <laughs> so we do test core boot. At the moment, out of 250 images, core boot images, two are not reproducible with the C BIOS payloads. We're not looking at the other payloads, but I think they are reproducible as well. It's a bit unclear what the next steps are, because um, core boot doesn't release binaries. So we can say it is reproducible, but yeah. And it's mostly Alexander Kurs's links this work here. Um, OpenWRT, um, we built three image, three architectures from OpenWRT and mm, 100 packages, I think. And most of them are reproducible. Um, with these 13 patches sent upstream last week by Alexander again and Brian Newbold. Um, whether one can create, recreate the build environment for OpenWRT in, as it was in the past needs to be, test, needs to be tested. Um, for OpenWRT, we could also, instead of rebuilding twice ourselves, we could just build once and compare this with the released binaries, but this has not been done yet, but should be done. NetBSD is the, it's way better now, I think, Thomas, Klausner, who's working on this, said that is his, he has a branch now where um, 52 out of these 54 files are reproducible. There is, you need to set a variable to make NetBSD build reproducible, this mk repo yes, and you need to set mk timestamp to source date epoch um, to getting re reproducible NetBSD. And I have no idea how to recreate the build environment because I'm, I don't know everything. I don't know many things. Um, so next step is ask Thomas what to do there. <coughs> FreeBSD, the base system is not yet reproducible, um, but almost there's five patches. The port system was already reproducible for 65% two years ago. There was a wiki page saying this. They tested it once. Um, I'm not sure whether they have all the variations we have in our testing framework. Um, there's a talk later today about the status of FreeBSD. Um, yeah. And 
all these URLs, you can go to these web pages now and check the status there. So there's, we, are, we are testing this already. Then we have ElectroBSD. I have no idea what ElectroBSD is. Um, there's a talk today. Um, it also says on the web page, ElectroBSD will be free software when it's released. I'm curious about the talk. Um, there's Fedora. Um, we have now, we're building Fedora um, using Mock so far, not with Koji, so just Mock. Dirokolia um, patched RPM so that the RPM file format includes the build time, uh, the build host, and also has a signature embedded. And the signature thing we haven't addressed, the build time we have addressed in this repository, but it's not enough to get reproducible packages there. Um, we're also only building Fedora 23 at the moment, and not neither, neither 24 nor raw, raw height. Um, there we need to spend more work on it. Um, I'm sure Fedora is almost as, re or is as reproducible as Debian because it's the same sources. It's just getting RPM built to behave. And somebody needs to hack on RPM. Who knows this? Dero is very busy. Uh, and I don't know RPM, so I'm not the right person to hack on it. I just set up this test. I'm happy that I understand how to build Fedora packages by now. And then there's Arch Linux. Um, we are building Arch Linux too with Levente. Um, he wrote patches for Pacman, the Arch Linux package main, uh, manager, um, which creates reproducible packages. Then we have not integrated the patches in our test framework yet, which is stuff for February. Um, but that looks good. And F-Droid. Uh, last week I started to, with Hans Christoph Steiner to build F-Droid on this Jenkins um, to do the same thing, but the work has just begun. And we have Geeks, which is reproducible or recreating the build environment is done by design. I have little idea how it worked because I left the talk yesterday to see the Iron Murdoch thing. Um, what's interesting, GUI, GUIX has this user verification tool, Geeks Challenge, which um, will rebuild a package and compare this with the released binaries, um, which is something we should also have for Debian, I think. Um, that looks very nice, but I cannot really say more. And Geeks also works by defining the build environment and normalizing variables there. Um, and I have a mail in my inbox which tells me how to set up these tests, which I should read. And there's more. Um, so Bitcoin and Tor are actually the both two projects who were the first who have released reproducible binaries at all. Bitcoin was afraid because they are handling real money now and lots of money. Bitcoin is four billion, I think, is the worth of Bitcoin. And the developers were afraid that if somebody has a Trojan binary, that they would be blamed. So they did reproducible builds so they can prove the binaries they released really come from the source. And same with Tor. Tor also wanted to be sure. NixOS has designed, is um, working on reproducible builds. The next release of Cubes um, in a year or something is planning to have reproducible builds. And there's probably also some commercial software and other software, which is, I don't know. If you know some more projects working on it, please tell me. And guess which commercial software is reproducible? Windows, medical devices in your body, arms, nuclear power plants, self-driving cars, no. Gambling machines. <laughs> And at least in Germany and France, gambling machines have to be reproducible binaries by law for tax reasons. It's pathetic. Um, it's also in the embedded, in parts of the embedded industry where they build small binaries, they also build reproducible binaries. But, yeah. And then there's also other projects. Um, OpenSUSE could be tested easily because the Fedora stuff 
on our framework just deals with RPM, so I just put a different RPM repository in there. SUSE will work. Ubuntu is waiting for progress in Debian. OpenBSD, I have no idea. Gentoo also releases binaries, so that would also be interesting to rebuild those binaries. And probably there's other software. Um, so I said there's still things needed to be done. One problem in the Debian release process is that we build Debian unstable now, and this becomes Stretch later. So parts of Debian Stretch will be built with versions which are not part of Stretch. And one solution could be rebuilding everything a month before, but we still have parts of Stretch not being built with software out of side Stretch. Um, it's unclear how we'll solve this. I think other projects will have the same problem when there's rolling, rolling distributions, especially. Um, then we have these build info files. So there will be 100,000 files per Debian suit, or 50,000, the number is wrong, because there's, no, it's right. There's 20,000 source packages and 10 architectures, and half of them are architecture all or something, so it will not be 200, 30,000, but a bit less, 100,000. And these are almost as many files as are in the mirrors now. So we cannot put these build info files on the mirrors. Um, we probably have single host or another neural network we need to think about and test. It's unclear. And we also want detached signatures, because when people rebuild, they should also sign the same build info file and say, yes, I reproduced this. It is reproducible, and I sign it. So we'll get lots of more signatures and revoking signatures, and it's all blurry what we do there. And then rebuilding and sharing sign checksums. Um, there has been some ideas floating around on how to do it in scale. We don't know. Um, one way is systematic auto, uh, rebuilds. The other is that developers just build and crowdsource it. And probably for different projects, there will be different solutions. Um, we could, in Debian, we have the web of trust with the GPG keys, so that part would work, but I'm not sure whether that would scale, really. Um, we could have rebuilders run by large organizations, whether ACLU, CERN, Deutsche Bank, NSA. We could have the US Army build it, the Russian Army, and the Army of North Korea, and if they all agree on the checksum, it's probably good. Um, I don't know. Or we could do Fedora rebuilds Debian, and Debian rebuilds OpenSUSE, and NetBSD builds whatever. Um, we need to think. I, I would love this example, actually. Way better than these armies. And then we need user tools. Do you really want to install this unreproducible software? Um, do you want to build this package which has not been reproduced before? Do you want to do that on your machine now? Um, and how many signatures are there needed to have a software called reproducible? One is enough, or you want three, and which rebuilders? Um, yeah, and which rebuilders do you trust? And how to put this into user tools? Um, for the test setup, we want, to te we want more ARM hardware for sure, but we also want to test other architectures. We want other um, test more projects, if possible. If you are interested to have your distribution tested, I'm happy to help you get it working. Um, we also want really need more people looking at the results. At the moment, I only build parts of Fedora and parts of Arch Linux because there's only one person each looking at the results, so I don't build all of Fedora and all of Arch Linux, but just a subset. Um, and also, we really want to, don't want to build twice, but rather build once and compare with released binaries, if there are any. Um, and yeah, this is just a testing framework. Um, it's important to work on this, but most of the work for reproducible builds needs to be done on the source code side. So fixing, in the Debian case, these 3,000 packages, 
um, is also a lot of work. And so to sum it up, I think we've come a long way, made quite some progress, but we are still not, we, don't not, we are not seeing the end of the tunnel yet. Um, yeah, we, we don't know where we're going yet. But I hope next year will be clearer. And it's really, really fun. Um, thanks to everybody who already contributed. And it's also, as I said, there's big problems and there's many, many small problems. And if you just submit one patch a week, and if 20 people do that, we'll be done at the end of next year. Um, to show you some ideas to get involved, to sum it up, as a software developer, please stop using build dates. Use source state epoch. Um, that's really important. If you want to get involved, just build something twice, run Diffoscope, and compare. We have this documentation is there. For Debian, you can install this tool chain, which I was using in this reproducible CH root, so you get dpackage packed. You can either ask on the Debian IRC channel, or we also have a um, reproducible minus build IRC channel. But we in Debian are really happy to help anybody to get anything reproducible. Um, you could join the reproducible builds teams. It's really a lovely group of people. It's very nice to work with. I learn something new almost every day. Things, some things I don't want to know and some other fascinating stuff. Like you find things, we found a bug that the software failed to build in the future. Because we test building in the future. And nobody does this, but people will build in the future. Time will pass and that will happen. And there's many, many things. Um, and there's many things to do. Like you can review packages, identify issues, find solutions, write patches, write documentation. There's many things. Or you could start another team. Like, as I said, we think the whole world should be reproducible. So if your project was not listed here, please get started. And there's two more talks today. This ElectroBSD and FreeBSD. They are both in the BSD developer room. And that's it, basically. These are the resources which, oh yeah, we have a, um, so this IRC channel gets the IRC notifications of changes. And we have mailing lists. We have a Debian mailing list, of course, but we also have a general mailing list now on list reproducible orgs. And we also have a Twitter account now for those of you who are into that. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for contributing. If you build an RPM now, it embeds the build time in the RPM container and also the build host and it puts a signature in there. And these things will prevent that the RPM gets bit by bit identically because each time you rebuild it, the build date changes. So we need to change RPM to not do that. Uh, so to support the same timestamp all through all uh, takes that uh, 
timestamps actually. I see. Any question? No. Up there behind the video desk. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, what is the impact of uh, installed packages that are not listed as dependencies? What are? If you have system packages installed that influence the build but are not explicitly listed as dependencies, is that common? That's not common anymore because we, we already built in a, Debian normally builds in a um, clean environment without these build dependencies installed. So these are just normal bugs and packages. Okay. We do find them sometimes, but these kind of bugs are in Debian usually gone. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, great job. And uh, my question is, some packages are backlisted because they require too much resources, like LibreOffice. And uh, what is the vision, how to solve that? What was your thing about LibreOffice? The, the, uh, on, on your website, the all LibreOffice uh, packages are backlisted from Jenkins test because with the ah. uh, explanation that they require too much resources. Well, is LibreOffice also blacklisted on AMD64? I think, I know it's blacklisted on ARM, but not on AMD64, but anyway, if we, we look at the moment at the big picture. So LibreOffice is an important package for sure, but it's just one out of 20,000 in a way, so we'll look at it later, or analyze it manually, or, yeah. Okay. So the target is to, beat it, to test it too? The target, we want to test all blacklisted packages. Usually, we have, there was one package where the test suite ran exponentially longer, you, the more cores you have. So, and we built with 32 cores at that time, so the test suite ran for, I don't know, days or something. So we just disabled that package. Because there's so many bugs to fix. If there's something which breaks the test suite, disable it, blacklist it, look at it later. One last uh, question. No. Okay. I'll be here all day. I'm happy to talk about anything. Enjoy FOSTEM. Thanks for listening. That's great. Thanks. That's great. Tough act to follow.